Ah, hey, everybody. Welcome back to 50 Conversations with 50 Strangers. These days have become longer days. When I did this initially and put it out, I was telling Chris in the green room just a moment ago that I used to want to have conversations and open myself up to open my calendar up for people to speak with me. And I tried to say, hey, if anybody wants to speak, I'm here. Just, you know, if you feel lonely, if you feel down, if you feel not even that, if you feel like you just want to talk to somebody, I'm here. Crickets. I got no response. Just absolutely no response. And then when I put up this, I, this, this concept of 50 conversations with 50 strangers, I've been inundated with, I'm getting eight, I'm having eight conversations a day with people that I, I've never met before. And it's been so beautiful to watch what's happened in these conversations. And Chris in the green room, the only thing I know about him is he told me he's in marketing and it was the name 50 Conversations with 50 Strangers that appealed to people and got people to sign up. So for those of you who want marketing already without even saying anything, Chris is, Chris is your man because I had no idea why it was working. And he came up with the idea that, that, that just a few words can really change the impact of what, of what a project is and what a project does. So listen to the conversation if you like it and he's going to we're definitely going to get his uh his urls and his social media and i'm going to also need a, a face a, a headshot from you um and you just contact each other one of the beautiful things that happened in one of the calls is i realized that this we can be a community of strangers and we can have stranger things happen by perhaps who knows in one of these conversations we might see somebody that could really help us in our business. We might see somebody who could really um, just be somebody we feel to talk to. And wouldn't it be strange if conversations with strangers brought us friends and brought and helped us grow our businesses, helped us grow our lives, helped us grow our, 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 our just network. Uh, and why not take advantage of that? Right? So listen to these and I'm posting them all on YouTube. I'm, they're all available for you. One woman told me as I do my work, I just play them in the background because I just love the concept. And it's so interesting to hear what different people say. So it's turning into a monologue, which I can have a tendency to do. I am so sorry about that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want to meet along with you, Chris Daly. And that would not be the way I would have pronounced his name when I see the spelling. So, Chris, I want to welcome you to 50 Conversations with 50 Strangers. And I want to just ask you, how are you and what's important to you? Thank you. Uh, i tell you what's important to me are people. And that's, I guess, what probably attracted me most to this was just what you said, a, a, an opportunity to have a conversation with a stranger. And, and my wife tells me, I'm the social butterfly and she, you know, she's like, I don't need people. And, but I, I talk to people in, in the, uh, you know, the, in the line at the grocery store, wherever, complete strangers. And I, so I love this. I'm going to go back and listen to every single one of them. I love it. And, and even if you feel to start it up yourself, like there's no yeah. reason why, like, wouldn't it be great if we had 50 conversations with 50 strangers in thousands of places and what would the world look like if we, if, if we suddenly became that type of person? Um, so how are you doing? Like, I know the, the standard answer is fine. We're doing great, <laughs> but the world's in a crazy situation. How are you I'm, doing with all that's going on? I'm actually doing well. Um, you know, again, I know it sounds like a standard answer, but, um, I'm in Texas, so we do things a little different here. <laughs> <laughs> and depending on which side, and it seems like the world has become much more divisive. Uh, you know, there, people choose sides when it doesn't need to be a, a side chosen. Yeah. But um, so, so people either love or hate Texas. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. That's kind of the, the feedback I always get. But, but I think what I've discovered being Texan is um, – that our belief system is do what you say, you know, say what you mean. And um, somebody needs help, you drop everything and you help them, you know, and yeah. if somebody's hurting somebody you like, you drop everything <laughs> and you go hurt them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, I mean, and that feels so Texas, right? And it, yeah. but, but there's something so wholesome about that also. It's a, it sort of hints back to the world that we once grew up in. 
yeah. which is where we cared enough about each other to take care of each other. And um, what do you think's happened to the world that we have moved so far away from that? Well, I think, like I said, I think social media and media in general, which, which you know, I hate to admit because being in the marketing business, I play a role in that, but I try to, um, to bring people together. Whereas if you look at news, you're either CNN or you're Fox. So you're telling two different stories about the exact same thing. Yeah. And, and on Facebook, that's, it seems like that's all that's out there right now is a lot of vitriol and, and, and smack talk back and forth. And very, very few people are doing things like this who yeah. are saying, Hey, let's talk. you you may realize that guy next to you that said something that you, you know, disagreed with, he might be a decent person. Yeah. And then if you talk, he might realize you're a decent person and you'll figure it out then. Yeah. It, it really interests me because as you see, I wrote a book called The Mosaic and this isn't at all what it's about. It's a, it's a fable about a boy who loses his parents and asks the adults where his parents are and they tell him they're in a place called heaven and it's about his search for heaven. But mm -hmm. when you think about the image of a mosaic, very rarely do the pieces come together side by side. Very often, some of the pieces just connect corner to corner, which yeah. means they share nothing in common but this one little corner. And it's what makes the mosaic whole and it's what makes the mosaic beautiful. It gives dimension and shape and, and character. That yeah. Not every piece is, 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 feels exactly like what the other piece feels. And I wonder if, if in art, it makes so much sense to have a mosaic and have, and have the connection be whatever the connection is. Where do you think in life we started to realize that we have to focus on how we're different rather than how we're connected? Again, I blame the media because the media will take a story and will will slam the the political viewpoint that they disagree with, and uh, and will try to get you to see the difference. You you don't hear anybody saying, "Oh, hey, we have this one thing in common." That never yeah. comes up. <laughs> yeah, I really want to change that. I mean, yeah. part of part of what. Because one of the things that I realize is in every single conversation that I'm having, there's some commonality to what we're doing together. Like even just you saying, like you're in Texas and you can say people like Texas or don't like Texas. <laughs> I'm in California. So that there, there could be no bigger dichotomy, right? And diametrically opposed. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So, like so many people would say, well, you guys will never get along. But what you're saying <laughs> is exactly what I believe. Yeah. And, and I think at the heart of who we are, we share so much more in common than we share, than we find that's different. Yeah. So let's do a lightning round just to sort of break it up a little bit. Okay. Sure. Are you a dog person or a cat person? Definitely a dog person. Yeah. Okay. Are you coffee or tea? Uh, actually, neither. <laughs> neither. I, okay. I, I drink ice water all day long. <laughs> wow. Ice water. Good for you. You're yeah. healthy. That's fabulous. <laughs> would would you say you're an in the box person or an out of the box person? I'm um, crazy out of the box. Crazy oh, out of the box. When you say you're having a conversation with a stranger, it doesn't get much stranger. There you go. I love that. <laughs> I love that. Um, would would you say it's more important to speak your mind, or would you say it's more important to to create the, a, a platform? for other people to, to, to be able to listen to other people speak their mind? Well, I guess it depends on the subject um, because my background is Texas high school football. And, and I don't think anybody goes to Texas without having a background <laughs> of Texas high school football. But actually I, I do, I do a lot of that for a living too. Oh, you I know, see. I, I, I've written several books. One of which was all I need to know. I learned from my Texas high school football coach. I love it. And it talks about the game teaches character, wisdom, uh, teamwork, you know, all these traits that one of them is leadership. And that is that building a platform for other people to uh, succeed. Well, yeah. But then there are other times when you just have to stand up and say, look, I have to tell you what I think right now. Yeah. Yeah. And that makes total sense. Right. So, and I love that when I asked that question, 
so many people don't answer one or the other. They say right. it's, it's always a combination of two. Yeah. Um, would you say that you fit into the world that you live in or that you're different from the world you live in? I think I'm quite different. And I think most people are quite different than, yeah. than the world because we define these worlds and they're, it's so arbitrary. Yeah. Do you think people realize that most people are different or do you think they think that they're the only ones that are different? Yeah, I think I think it's, you know, and that could be a lot of the reason there's things like suicide is because they think I'm the only one going through this, but there's no perfect family. There's no perfect person there. You know, we've yeah. all got issues. I think I've had probably 20 calls already, and I don't think anybody has said that they fit into the world totally. Yeah. That, you know, and the only one I think that said it is I fit in because everybody doesn't fit in. Yeah, and, I and love so, that. <laughs> so, so that was really interesting. Would you say you run your life? Which leads your life, your head or your heart? Uh, definitely my heart. Uh, I've been told I need to do more thinking and less feeling, but you know, sorry, that's me. You know, I'm about people and I'm about, you know, what's passionate to me. And I know this is supposed to be a, a lightning round, so I'll shut up. No, no, you're good. I, <laughs> we define what the lightning round is. It doesn't have to be anything, but we want. I love it. <laughs> I want to give you the air, the re, I want to give you all the space you need to say who you are. That's really Thanks. what I want to do. Would you say you're a leader or a follower? Um, I think the one of the qualities of good leadership is knowing when to follow. Okay. So again, it's whatever role I am needed to be in. I will step up and take charge if needed. But you know, if if it will help you to grow by being the leader, I'll stand back. So let me. I, I just thought about something when, and I haven't asked this to anybody else before. But part of the reason I think I formulated that question really quickly is because they did some experiments with people who couldn't understand, they couldn't understand how people in Nazi Germany could apply right. the, you've, you've heard of those studies where they, put, yes. where they, and they, and then they took people in a room and they told them that a doctor was going to come in and they were going to put electric voltage through a person. Yep. And it wasn't, they were, they, the actor was acting it, thank God. Mm -hmm. But but the doctor told them to do to put electric voltage in, and they were shocked at how many people just followed the doctor, yep. even though they saw. When I say, "Are you a leader of or a follower?" Do you, do you think you have the courage to stand up to the tide of people doing what you think is not right? I I think I do, and I know everybody thinks they do. Yeah, <laughs> but. But I've been in some situations where, you know, I could go along to get along and I'm like, no, I, I just can't. So I think so. I hope so. I pray that if that situation comes up where it's, okay, you've got to line up your friend and kill them, you know, because that's yeah. what you have to do. I wouldn't do it. Yeah. And even more realistically in the world we're li living in right now, there's such a political divide. Yes. That people side on one side and don't even question it. It doesn't matter if you're Republican or Democrat, everybody right. does it. There's no, I mean, there's nobody that really listens. Like so many times I'll hear Trump speak and I'll say, boy, there's something, what he's doing, there's something really good about what he's saying. Mm -hmm. But nobody even gives him the, the credit for doing anything. Like all he wants is, I think if someone would say, hey, you know what, you shut down the borders to the Chinese in January, that is yep. fab that that was so fabulous that you did that too bad we didn't follow that up in those in the six weeks or something <laughs> that followed right or whatever that is but you at least give him the credit for what he did even if you disagree with what he didn't do afterwards right but nobody gives that credit and i don't understand how it's possible that we yeah, can't give it, credit it, it's interesting you brought up trump so i'll i'll yeah. I'll, I'll jump in there <laughs> yeah uh, and you know, my wife and I were having this conversation because, you know, we're very conservative, you know, we're in conservative state We're you know, we grew up in the country. So, um, and she's like, Oh, the stuff he says, it just, how, how can you support that? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I'm like, look, Donald Trump as a person, I think, is a douchebag. I think he's a bad person. I would not want him as a friend. Yeah. But we need somebody up there now 
who will take these these tough ta tax on things and uh and yeah, he, he's, I don't view him as a great Christian. I view him as a serious businessman that is just trying to do what he thinks he knows how to do. Yeah, and that's so okay. Like why, what I don't understand <laughs> is why people have to fight what you believe. Yeah. Like whether, you, whether they believe it or not, like I may disagree or agree with you, it doesn't matter. Sure. But to give you the right to believe and have the space to say, this is what I believe, that mm -hmm. I may not like to go out to lunch with them or I might not like to have them be my friend, <laughs> but I do, like, I do think we need somebody strong running our country. Why shouldn't that be okay? Why should, why should people just feel that they can pot shot that down yeah. one way or another? But both sides do it, right? Sure. Yeah, I mean, I if if I ever and I try to stay completely away from politics because being a marketer, I'd lose half my customers. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, if if anything comes up like I say something positive about either a Democrat or a Republican, the other yeah. side, you know, will yeah. jump on it instantly, and you're right i mean why why do they have to do that why can't they say okay you know i may disagree with your point about that and here's why instead if i say something positive about trump i'm labeled a white supremacist for some yeah. reason yeah. <laughs> it's no, like what 100 percent, 100 percent. i'm the type of guy who listens to both cnn and fox yeah because i want to know the perspectives and sometimes like i'll say to my wife sometimes I wonder if we're if if these if these newscasters are living in the same world because they're talking <laughs> about a situation like from totally different angles. But I love that because it gives yeah. perspective, and it allows me to not see it this way or this way, but to try and bring blend those together. Anyway, yeah. back to lightning round. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> do Do you think people are more different than they are alike, or more alike than they are different? I actually think they're a lot more alike um, because at, at their core, you know, people are, they want to protect those close to themselves. Absolutely. You know, and, and that's important. They want to protect their beliefs, you know, which is why things get so polarized. Yeah. But, uh, uh, but yeah, I think most of them, with the exception of the psychopaths of the world, and I'm not talking about the the killers. I'm talking about right. the, the the actual sociopaths that are just selfish and you know, yeah, yeah. rude. But uh, yeah, I, I think mostly people are good. I, I agree with that 100. percent People are good, and and most people are most people. <laughs> do you, thank you so much for that. Do you, do you do you believe that everybody in the world has a purpose? Um, I think it was Mark Twain who said there are two most important days in your life, the day you're born and then the day you find out why. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I do, I do agree with that. I'm, I'm not sure everybody finds that purpose. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what your purpose is? I think so. I think so. It's, um, I think it's communicating because like I mentioned earlier, I've written several books now. I've been doing podcasts since podcasting began. Wow. Um, I've done over, oh gosh, probably 20,000 episodes. Of oh my God. Shows. Yeah. Oh exactly. my God. <laughs> As a consultant, I teach, I, I, you know, so it's all communication, everything I ever do. I thought I was doing good and I had like 86 of them. Two, yeah, I mean, that's a lot of episodes. Yeah. Um, Do you feel like your voice is heard? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. I mean, there, I do have, you know, I know people hear things from me, whether it's my, my book audiences, my podcast audiences, because I get some feedback. Yeah. But, you know, the people close to me, they'll hear me. Actually, they might just ignore me. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> but... But yeah, I, I think so. I, I think somewhat, but obviously I don't have a platform like Kanye West or someone like that. Right. You know, right. So, so yeah, it's heard, but I don't need everybody to hear me. No, totally. 
And do you feel like you have a message to the people that hear you? Or do you, do you feel like what you're saying is what is something you really want to say to people? I think so. Um, and tell because, me what that is, if you don't mind. Sure, sure. Um, like I said, on, on social media, I share positive things. I yeah. do jokes. I, I, I wrote three books called Lame Jokes Rule, and it's just dad jokes. <laughs> and so I'll share those. Um, I mentioned the book, the All I Need to Know I Learned from My Texas High School Football Coach. That yeah. sends a very positive message about these qualities that uh, are, are, are missing in some areas. I wrote another book called Rocket Man about a, a coach that uh, coached at Converse Judson outside of San Antonio, Texas, and he taught a lot of those same principles. Um, my podcasts, I, I've got several different ones that um, – you know, it all boils down to be good, or be nice, and uh, and do good. That's really it. I love that. Will you do me a favor and make sure, sure you send me a headshot and all your URLs and all your podcast, all the social media <laughs> okay. links and all, and I'll put them in the in the notes here. So, if, and also include how people can get your books. So, sure. if people want to do that, that you have an avenue to get that out there. Um. like you hear people speaking to you and mm -hmm. when we, all of us hear them sometimes and don't right but we we understand that people speak messages to us and sometimes we listen and sometimes we don't do you believe other things in the world speak to us do you believe inanimate objects do you believe the world itself is speaking to us do you believe our bodies speak to us do you believe our businesses speak to us do you believe you know um our situations in life speak to us yeah, yeah, I definitely believe our bodies speak to us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I tried running, and it, believe me, it's screaming at me. <laughs> I bet, I bet. <laughs> but yeah. but yeah, I think uh, I think situations speak to you, and I don't know what you can call that wisdom uh, or 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 what. But um, the same thing, you know. I do. I am a a God fearing person. I do believe my heavenly Father speaks to me and gives me uh, comfort when I need comfort. And, uh, you know, direction when I'm struggling with which way to go on some things. So now when you say inanimate objects, uh, my mouse does not speak to me. <laughs> right. I'm more, I'm more thinking about, like, do you believe that with COVID-19 or if you believe in global warming, you may or may not. Or if you in, or if you see environmental things happen where there's hurricanes and storms, do you believe that the world is trying to say something to us? Do you believe that the um, um, situations that bring race protests or not, or or people opposing race protests, do you believe that there's some situations like that that are speaking to us? I, I, yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, I think some of that is orchestrated speech. Yes. <laughs> you <yeah>. know. <laughs> so I think there are people some some machinations behind the scene going on that are you know like delivering a pallet full of bricks and paying protesters to go places. I I think that's people manipulating not totally. necessarily the situation uh totally. speaking to us but um either way it's it's loud and loud and clear. <laughs> yeah and I'm not so much thinking in terms of actual manipulative actions of of agitators or right. people that are trying to create separation but more just in general like when i wrote this book the mosaic i was shocked because i i had written a book for a hotel to brand a hotel and i had never done that before and mm -hmm. they said we want you to tell our story yeah and I said, but I don't do that. They said, no, you're a great storyteller. We want you to just write a story. I said, okay, tell me what your story is. They said, we don't have a story. We want you to create a story for us. So I said, wow, that's interesting. Okay, well, why don't you send me your core values and tell me why people come to, your, come to, to the island here of Hawaii? Why do mm -hmm. they come to Maui? And they said, people come to fall in love. And here's yeah. our core values. And so I made characters from their core values. And I made a, and I wrote a love story based on the characters that I created in that in that book. And what I realized is, wow, there's something going on here that that is really interesting. And and I was going to Maui to the hotel to present to their staff of 400 people, 
the book and to tell them what I had done. And the day before that, I was walking on the beach. Mm -hmm. And as I was walking on the beach, suddenly out of nowhere, this thought came to me of, what if you didn't just make up the characters? What if the characters in your book actually came to you for another reason than you think? Like maybe, maybe, and the story of the property was that this was a home mm -hmm. and that the people, the family had gotten dispersed. And, uh. and so they said, the, the story started to say to me, well, what would happen if the reason the, the main chef is here is not because he's the best chef, although he has to be great, but it's because he's part of the dispersion of the family and they're bringing the family back to the to home to open up the home in, as a hotel to take care of people. And what about the sales people? And what about the front desk people? And, and what if all of them were now generations of people that have been lost to this home coming mm. back? And I thought, holy Toledo, that's interesting, but it's not true. I mean, I wrote, I, I, I made up the characters. Right. I wrote them out. And so as I'm presenting, I hear this voice say to me, talk about the fact that maybe you didn't make up these sort of characters. And so I'm standing in front of 400 people and I said, okay, I'm, I'm going to go way off board here. You're going to think I'm crazy. But yesterday as I was walking and I told the story and I said, so I'm telling you that it's probably not true, but on the off chance that it is true, how would that change the perspective of who you are and how you do your work here? Yeah. What would happen if you were really family coming home to this place and welcoming the world into your family, into your home. How would that change the way you did your job? And could you even believe that? And there was a guy in the back, he must have been 450 pounds, he was a kahuna. And underneath his breath, he started, he started saying, Ohana, Ohana, Ohana's family. Mm -hmm. And he started saying Ohana, and suddenly the people around him started saying Ohana, Ohana. Ohana and this chant of Ohana started to take hold and suddenly 400 people were chanting Ohana and the lights in the, in the room started to flicker and the doors blew open. And I thought, Oh my God, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> what did I get myself into? It sure doesn't seem like an imagination now. Yeah. And they came up to me and they said, even if it's not true, what that would do for us as a hotel to, to keep our, to keep our family, intact we we want to create a family yeah and on the off chance that it is true we're going to run with that do you know the the retention rate that they had for people working there was through the roof yeah and people said well that's just because it's hawaii but they had another hotel two miles away that didn't have that philosophy and was turning people over all the time yeah and so what i wonder is like do things have a voice that if we would listen to them we might hear something as off as, as off as the possibility might be. I, I actually love that story. And I love that idea. One of the shows that I do is for the Texas high school football hall of fame. And it was, it was at a book signing there that I'm going through the hall of fame. And I, I think I got something similar that happened because I'm looking at all these his, historic things and I was just like, this, this story needs to get out there. Yeah. Um, so I contacted the head of the Hall of Fame and said, hey, do you want to do a show? And he's like, yeah. So, so we've been doing that now for a year. And, and I think that's, that's a very similar story. I think those exhibits spoke to me, you know, yeah. spoke to my heart. Just like, hey, this, I need to share this. And so how is it possible for a conservative Dallas guy that is a is a good christian and i'm not saying this in any sure. way like I, not, we're not in dallas by the way okay okay, <laughs> okay. so so wherever you are yeah. a, a conservative texas guy right who yeah. is, who is who believes it with in god and believes in church and believes in christ how is it possible that something like that could happen and yet it does happen yeah and, and it's not in contrast, like, it doesn't have to be in contrast to your belief system. It not can at all. Be in, right? It can be in support of it. Yeah, and that's, that's one of the things that, you know, when I talk to people and I tell them about my belief system, they're like, oh, I just believe in science, you know? And I'm like, 
I, I hundred percent believe my God is a God of science. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. they're not diametrically opposed. So, yeah. so just like you said, the, that having things speak to you, um, that's, that's part of his plan. hundred <laughs> so, percent. Yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. So what do you think the world, knowing that we know that you now had that experience with the hall of fame, mm -hmm. knowing that you enjoyed the story that I told that was, I mean, completely made up in my mind because I made up those characters, sure. right? but then something changed and maybe I didn't make them up. And, and I, to this day, I don't know what actually happened. <laughs> okay. What do you think the world is trying to say to us? I think the world is crying out for healing. Uh, and, and I think shows like this are exactly what we need. We need to communicate with people. You know, uh, yeah. my, my, my nephew we, we ha I hadn't seen him since he was a little baby. We went to a family reunion. He lives in another part of the country. And we hit it off really well, not knowing anything about politics. Yeah. We have since discovered we're completely different on politics, on almost everything. Yeah. But, you know, I could have just written him off like, oh, he's one of these crazy liberal nut jobs or whatever. Right. You know. Uh, and he could have said, oh, he's a conservative wacko and wrote me, off, wrote me off. But instead, I messaged him and I said, hey, you know, you, you said this, you know, what, explain what your thinking is there. Yeah. And he did. And we, we've been going back and forth. And, and I think having that background of having spent a week together at this family reunion and having the trust already there. Yes. I think we, we're able to communicate with each other and, and not jump to those, you know, this side or that side kind of thing. And I think that's all people need to do is to talk. I think what you said is so important. And I want to ask the listeners to just make sure they heard that. If you didn't just hear what Chris said, go back and listen to it again. Because I know in my life, I have friends who have what I would consider the wackiest belief systems you could ever have but they also are my close friends because on, on so many other things, we love each other and we just would, we yeah. would take a bullet for each other. And it doesn't matter. Nobody in my life, I, I've had the opportunity to sit with the richest people in the world, to be at their dining room tables and their living rooms, to meet their children and to meet their parents. They've been kind enough to give me counsel and I've been, and they've been kind enough to ask counsel from me. And I've also been lucky enough and fortunate enough, really fortunate, to sit on cardboard boxes with some of the poorest people the world's yep. ever known. And we've done the same thing. They've been kind enough to give me counsel, and they've been kind enough to ask for counsel from me. And one of the things that I saw, no matter how much money a person had or how much they didn't have, no matter what religion they practiced or what, or what color their skin, no matter what side of the border they were from or, or weren't from, no matter what language they spoke or belief systems they had, I found every single person wants exactly the same thing. They just want to be loved and accepted. Yeah. They want to be listened to and heard. They want to be acknowledged for what they believe and validated in their belief system. Doesn't, nobody's ever asked me, to, to, nobody's ever said to me, Danny, will you please, you have to agree with me. Yeah. Because when they feel loved and accepted and acknowledged and validated and, and listened to and heard, they know that I have the right to think what I believe and believe what I believe, just like I've given them the right to do that. And there's never a problem with that. And I don't know where the world has gone, where we think, if you don't believe like me, I defriend you. Yeah. <laughs> right. Or if you don't believe like me, I can't speak with you or I'm going to create chaos. Why don't we let people believe what they believe and still find things in them? that we love, like your nephew. He's your nephew, for God's yeah. sake, right? You can't, you can't disown him. He's your nephew, <laughs> right? And, and you're his uncle. So those, those, those bonds, when we, when we take the time to get to know somebody, we have a bigger bond than what we believe or don't believe. Mm -hmm. And it just seems like it makes so much sense to just take a few minutes and do this. If you had free form, which you have right now in a completely non-judgmental mm -hmm. 
space, what would you want to say to the world that might help heal the divide? Um, I would say go back and listen to all your shows for one, because <laughs> right. I'm assuming they all run similar to this where, you know, you discover people are people. Yeah. Um, but, but just from the standpoint of being a conservative, right? Um, maybe try, maybe I can spend a, a minute or two here trying to help people understand what conservatism means to me. Sure. And again, if, you know, you can write it off or you can say, oh, okay, I can see a similarity. But for me, it's about uh, family first. Uh, I think the family unit is so important. It is part of God's plan. Yeah. Um, and the destruction of the family unit, I think, has been in a large part, part of the downfall of, of society. So, so I, I, think that's very important to keep that together but that doesn't mean that um it's my family and not your family you know it, yeah. we're a family of of humans yes i love that <laughs> and and yes i am i am a uh let me look here I, I am a, a gun-toting conservative. Yeah. You're not going <laughs> to shoot me. You can't get me. I'm on the other side of the computer. <laughs> but, and I, I do believe in the Second Amendment, but again. But I believe in the Second Amendment. Yeah. That, but that's right. I mean, it's the Second Amendment, for God's sakes. We have a right, right to, defend, to defend ourselves. Yeah. But again, you know, I, I keep it with me. I carry it on me concealed you know i don't go around with an ar-15 showing right. off and intimidating people it's not there for me to shoot people yeah it is there for me to protect myself and my loved ones period yeah that's the only thing it's used for yeah um other than you know i'll go to the range <laughs> just to make sure i'm going to hit what i aim for <laughs> have you ever had to pull it out and use it no, no. And like I said, I grew up in the country. I'm, I'm in my mid fifties now. Yeah. And um, everybody I know out there has guns. Totally. I have yet to find one person who's ever had to pull it out. Yeah. You know, yeah. gun control is hitting what you aim for <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and not using it unless you need to. Yeah. It, it, I don't understand what the big fuss is. It's like martial arts. When yeah. you take martial arts, you're trained to know how to kill a person. Yeah. But yeah, a good you're, martial you're... artist never, never gets into a fight. Right. Because by, just by having the authority of walking into a room and people understand that he's got the ability to take care of himself, people don't want to fight. Why would you want to fight that guy? You'll pick somebody else if you need to. So right. I, don't, I don't really understand like what the fervor is about. I do maybe understand when it's an AK-47 or when it's an right. automatic, or, you know, or when it's an automatic, because I don't need an automatic to take care of myself, most likely. Well, I, I, I think it, you know, if you go back to, was it Teddy Roosevelt who said, you know, speak softly and carry a big stick? Yeah, yeah <laughs> that's, 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 that's all it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, most likely, most <laughs> likely. So, so conservative means then to you, that family is important, mm -hmm. but it's not my family versus your family. It's right. we are we are a family of the human race, right? And that we have a right to protect our family and take care of, and and make sure our family do, doesn't harm doesn't come to our family. Yeah. Is there and, anything else in there that you want to say? And 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 I think it's real important that government's job is not to do everything for us, not to protect us from ourselves. It's yeah. to protect us from enemies foreign and domestic and uh you know provide for the common defense right and protect yeah. the general welfare that's it not all these these programs that you know I, I was hearing i was hearing some uh black college professor the other day who was saying that and he was showing studies showing that it was the civil rights movement that led to the downfall of, of uh, the black family unit because his his take was that that because when the the nanny state comes in and says okay we'll give you money we'll help you out it took away the need for the the dad because you know it, 
black families had record had had really low unemployment before the okay. civil rights yeah. amendment. Oh, okay. civil rights. Yeah, wow. and then and then it dropped down to you know just horrible unemployment after that. Yeah. Um, and then and then when someone like Donald Trump comes in and it's record unemployment for black people, everybody's trained to hate, like you said earlier. Yeah. They don't even care if something good happened to say, oh, good job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. I and I I myself don't understand that. Like, why can't credit be given for what credit is? what what good things happen yeah like like the economy was doing good whether for whatever reason it is the economy was doing good give the guy a bone for god's sakes yeah. like I'm, I'm probably not the biggest donald trump supporter sure you know but still in in the history of what he's doing there's some really good things that he's done there's some yeah, really and, and there's some shitty done. things too yeah, for sure yeah. you and, know and, there, but, there's some but, environmental things i don't necessarily agree with <laughs> completely I, I, nor nor do i but but again we don't have to agree with everything we just mm -hmm. have to give i think if we i'm going to go out on a limb here a little i hope i'm not going too far out but all of us want to be appreciated for the things that we do sure and even the president of the United States wants to be appreciated for what we do. When we constantly have a group of people who are only pointing out the flaws of what yeah. he's done, anybody, you, me, anybody's going to stand up and go, whoa, whoa, it's not that bad. Like I've done some good things. Yeah. Right. And, and if, and his particular way of doing it may not be the softest <laughs> and gentlest way of doing it. Yeah. But, yeah, he's but, a bit of a petulant child at times, but, yeah, I, but, I would, but I would say fake news. I would just use better words. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 but how it's so understandable. If someone were to say that to me, I would have my feelings hurt too, because I'm trying yeah. my best to do the best that I can. Consequently with, with the Democrats, I don't, I think they're trying their best to do the best that they can. We may not agree, or you may not agree, or I may agree, sure. or it doesn't matter. But when you see, one of the things about Mosaic to me is about when Mo goes on his trip to find heaven, mm -hmm. because the adults told him that his parents are in a place called heaven. He meets with people that are ordinary people, salt of the earth people. He meets with the the gardener and the, and the waitress and the road worker and this and the homeless guy and the blind woman and just basic ordinary people and he comes in with all sorts of preconceived first impressions and the more time he spends with them the more he realizes they're not at all what he saw yeah they're not at all what he thought we're not taking the time to spend time with each other to see if our first impressions are are right or wrong. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to make a, I'd make a penny bet with anybody listening. And that's a big bet for me because I'm not a betting man. <laughs> but I'll make a penny bet with anybody listening that most of the time your first impressions are off, yeah. no matter how good your instincts are. And so what do you think it would take for conservatives to be more gentle to to bleeding liberals and for bleeding liberals to be more gentle and more kind to gosh if i had the answer to that <laughs> yeah, yeah i would i would already implement it but um i i don't know i really don't know because i do have some friends on both sides of the political spectrum because i i can you know i'm, I'm the kind of person who like in your example you know, I can sit with the poorest guy, the richest guy, and I can relate to them. Yeah. Um, but I hear that 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 anger from each side, yeah. and you know, I try to temper it, but obviously, I'm not. I alone can't do it all. I, I may get somebody to go, hmm, okay. Yeah. But that's a tiny drop in this ocean. <laughs> Do you have a minute or two? Because I was I normally end by now, but I, I just sure. I, I could end. I just wanted to share with you a story if I could. Sure. Um, my daughter is the is the person I love most in this world. 
Um, and she's also probably taught me more than anybody in the whole world. And I've been around, that. I've been around some of the best teachers and, and best leaders the world's ever seen. And yet I come back to the lesson my daughter's taught me. My daughter's at 30 years old and she's developmentally delayed. Mm. She can't speak like you and I speak. And when she speaks, most of the time, people don't understand what she's saying. Right. And because of that, she counts on me to understand what she's saying because she and I are so close. I mean, we talk to each other every single day and she says to me, you know, I said to you, do you love daddy a little or a lot? She's a lot, daddy. And I say, <laughs> I love you a lot too. And, you know, do you love me so much or way more than so much? Way more than so much, daddy. And I said, I do too. And, and so we have this huge bond between us. But she hasn't always been the biggest blessing in my life because it's been really hard. Yeah. Her mom passed away when she was eight years old of a terrible cancer. And so for a lot of years, I raised her on my own and I'm a guy guy. I don't know. I don't know how to do that stuff. And so there came a period of time for about 15 years where she would try and speak and I wouldn't get it. Like most, sometimes I got it, but sometimes I didn't. Mm -hmm. And when I didn't get it, she would start to yell and try and say it louder because she thought maybe I just didn't hear it, but it was never because I didn't hear it. Right. It was just because I couldn't understand the words. And to her credit, every once in a while when she yelled it, she said the words slightly differently and I got it, but not often. Sure. And so when she would yell and she didn't get heard, then she would go into a tantrum and it didn't matter where we were. We could be in, a, in her school, we could be in a walk, taking a walk along the downtown, we could be at the beach, we could be in a restaurant, we could be in a store, we could be at home. She would go crazy in a tantrum. And when the tantrum didn't work, she would come running at me and try and rip my shirt or bite me. She would attack. This went on for about 15 years. Mm -hmm. I used to think I was smart, but I just couldn't figure out what to do. And finally, in the midst of her rage one time, I just said, Elisa, I can't do it anymore. It's enough. I just don't understand your words. Can you try and communicate to me in a way that doesn't use words? Can you, do, can you talk to me in a different way? And from the midst of her rage, she got this big smile on her face that just melted my heart. And in perfect English, she said, I am daddy. And I looked at her and I said, what the expletive deleted are you talking about? You are daddy. What are you doing? How are you doing that? And she took her finger and pointed to the side of her head. And what I understood from that is because she couldn't speak, she had a, she had a more advanced ability to be able to use telepathy and put thoughts into my head. And she was telling me she was putting thoughts into my head. And I had, I had thought that maybe she was doing that. I just didn't trust my instincts. Mm -hmm. And I said to her, you little son of a gun, have you been putting thoughts into my head and I haven't been hearing them? And I saw you, you sort of smile. But can you imagine the frustration that is off of her when I finally got what she was trying? How she, she started to laugh like out of control. And it was that contagious laugh that I just started me laughing. And we probably laughed for five or 10 minutes, but it felt like a year and a half. And there was such a release in that moment. And I said, I, now I know how to hear you. Do you know, since that moment, she's never yelled, she's never tantrumed, and she's never attacked. She'll, just, she'll go like this sometimes, or sometimes she doesn't even have to. I'll just feel it. Chris, the story would be fabulous if it ended there. But the truth of the matter is every single person I work with, every government official, every political politician, every CEO of a company, every teacher in every school, every student in every school, every employee, every, everybody that I work with follows that exact same pattern. When they speak and they don't get heard, they yell. Mm -hmm. When they yell and they don't get heard, they try and create chaos. They try and create confusion. They try and mess up, mess up a situation and try and disrupt it. So we have to stop. When their disruption doesn't work, they attack. That could either be they blow up a building, they ruin a marriage, they ruin, they try and ruin an initiative, they try and fight each other and stop Congress from passing bills. You know, it doesn't matter. You see it like right in their political situation. That's what's happening. Yep. And and my daughter, developmentally delayed daughter taught me the antidote to all that. 
It just comes back to trying to listen, trying to understand what is a person saying. And if we can't understand their language, try and understand how they're saying it to us in a different way. It's my goal in my life to start a revolution of listening. We all know how to talk, but we sure don't know how to listen very much. And I think if we can have conversations like this, I think it's fair to say that you're on a different side of the political spectrum than I am. But it, we had a peaceful conversation. Yeah. I think you felt heard and acknowledged by me. I think you have heard and acknowledged me. And it, those types of conversations are what's need, needed to yeah, get us and, through. And I was going to say, I think at the core is... Uh, such a beautiful story that you had there is love people where they're at. Yes. And, and and that's how you break down that communication wall. Yeah. And so little by little things like this are, are making that happen. And I want to just thank you with all, with, with the deepest gratitude of my heart for taking the risk and coming on to this conversation. Thank you. And for having it with me and, is there one thing you want to say that you just haven't been able to say or just feel like you didn't get out that you'd like to share with people as a closing thought? Um, no, just uh, love the people close to you and, and reach out and love those that aren't that close to. <laughs> I, I love that. I love that. Okay, people, I, I want you to just listen to how beautiful this conversation was. And given a different slant on the way we would have had it. It could have ended in an argument easily, right? But neither one of us went there. And none of us need to go there. It's superfluous. It's a waste of time. It doesn't do anything. And who knows between Chris and I and other people who have had these conversations like listen to these conversations, it might just ignite an idea that you never thought about before. My, my view of the world is we, anything in the world is possible. The reason it's impossible is we don't see a way yet to make it possible. So if we stop looking where everybody we know looks and allow ourselves to look in another place for another new idea, in business that's called innovation. In in politics, that's called revolution. That's called that's called seeing a new, not revolution like we overthrow a, uh, that. But it, it's it's the ability to to come together and and not do what everybody is doing, but find some new way of doing it that may, that creates a new solution. I believe in this world that we live in, and I believe it's conversations like this that have really re inspired me not just with Chris, but with the other 30 people that I've already talked to and, and the thousand more and the, and the 10,000 more that I will continue to talk to. And I want to invite all of you to take the risk and start, out, start having conversations with people you don't know and listen. Chris, thank Amen. you again. Thank you again from the bottom of my heart. For those of you who listen to the show, thank you so much for your support and for listening. Please, Share these with your friends. They're on YouTube now. Uh, they're on Facebook. They're on social media. Share them around. Listen to them. And give feedback. Let me know what you think. Until next Thank time. you so much. My honor. My honor, brother. Thank you very much. Until next time, we'll see you. And don't be a stranger. Okay. Ciao.